Welcome back to another episode of the Financial Advisory Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, a very good friend of mine, Stefan Grenier. What's up, man? How's it going? Hey, how you doing, Tony? <laughs> How's it going? Thanks so, for having me here. You are welcome. Love it. So the reason I wanted Stefan on, because he's got a lot of cool stories. Uh, one, he barely speaks English, so we got a language barrier here to, to work through. We'll have to edit some, maybe we'll some sub, maybe some subtitles for this one, but he's from Canada. He used to be a lineman. Well, he's still a lineman. It's like I'm still a lineman. He's still a lineman. So similar career backgrounds, and we met almost by accident. So we'll get into all that story, but let's go into, um, you know, what do you do right now? And, and like, what's your, let's hear your story, man. All right. Yeah, hey, so thanks, Tony. You're welcome. Nice setup. Life's pretty cool, like right? Like it. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Of course. Um, yeah. So started um, in Quebec. Yeah. That's where I was born were you and raised. Were you alignment in Quebec? I did my apprenticeship over there. Okay. Um, it's the same union yep. as the uh, United States, so the IBW. Okay. Um, went through a similar similar process, a slightly different, but overall the same goal. Okay. Um, and uh, came to the United States uh, as a fresh journeyman. So when you topped out in Quebec, they gave you a journeyman ticket, yellow journeyman ticket. Yes. And then when you came to the United States to sign the books, it was just as easy as traveling from Florida to Texas, or was it different? Um, no. Okay. So um, what was that like when you signed the books for linemen that are watching out there? So first, you're not from here. Right. So you're sometimes not welcome. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. It's not an easy trade. Well. Uh, so there, there's definitely some bumps in the roads there. But what about just going to the um, local union hall? Is that Does it transfer just as easy there? Uh, yes. For okay. that, yes. You go in and, and sign the okay. books and, and do your normal thing. Uh, but the, when you're talking about you get to the job site, that's where the struggles because yeah, that's where it gets you, a little you rougher. Have a language, yeah. You have a language. I made a joke earlier about a language yeah. barrier, but at the time when you came over, you didn't speak English, right? Uh, barely. Whatever you learn at school, but you know, it's not. Um, it's not good. Not proper. No, but like we, we don't learn the trade in English. You know, okay. I didn't go to school. The lineman school did yeah. my apprenticeship in English. You don't get those things at school. Okay. So the. Just the name, asked, of the, the name of the tools, yeah, hardware, the name, right? everything. For dog bones. So everything. It's like nothing. Yeah. Yes. And that happens even just um, regional as, a, as an yes. American. Yes. So I can imagine, because if you go to Texas or you go to yeah. Florida, a one bolt sometimes called a daggett or yeah. it's called or, Slightly you know, different. or a dog bone's called a bear claw, whatever, whatever it may be. Like there's different terminology. So I can only imagine the language yeah. there too. Like, Talk to about be, a headache. Yeah. Yeah. Well, luckily so, you're a big enough guy. It would probably hard to bully you at least. It, yeah, that helped a little still bit. Still got into a lot of fights. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Like it just, because of that. yeah, it just helps uh, a little bit. Not, yes, if you're a little guy, it would have been a little harder. But I had to be a hard. I mean, a, the trade's hard enough, as you mentioned. Yes. To then have the the barriers of language in a foreign country, and all that going into it. Like, so what made you go from Canada to America? What was the driving force there? Well, so I in in Canada, I was working kind of way up north, living okay. in man camps. Okay. Minus fifty, minus sixty degrees, Fuck, man. Very cold. Yeah. Um, just hard work. Okay. Uh, and when I came to United States, uh, it was just either we we finished a project, uh, a, a transmission line that went from on uh, Quebec to Ontario, Canada. Okay. And from there, the project ended. I was going to go back into man camps way up north. So that project you're talking about wasn't man camp. So it was like no. more, more like, like just normalized normal, work, go yes. home every night. So you got yep. a taste of that. And you're like, fuck, I don't want to go back to the man camps. That sounds terrible. Yeah, and they say, well, there's uh, there's some work. Uh, we got work visas and work in Detroit. <laughs> Oh fuck! I may I may go to man camps instead of Detroit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I Detroit didn't know like at the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Detroit's usually going to be a favorable so, option. But it, I was like, yes, okay. I will go. Okay. So I got a work visa, and that's where when I came to the United States, I I um I came through. Uh, what, and what year Ambassador is this? Ambassador Bridge in Detroit. What year about is this? Two thousand and three. Okay. Okay. Crossed over, um, went to the uh, Union Hall there. I think it's Local 17. Yep, Local 17, Detroit. Yep. Yes. Uh, a, a funny story about that, though. I showed up in a Volkswagen yeah. Jetta, yeah. brand new, nice car at my age. was Fuck very yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, they made me turn around because I didn't have an American car. Yeah, Detroit's obviously the motherland <laughs> of all the American cars. and So. <laughs> yeah. I, so off to a good start is what you're saying, right? Yes, <laughs> but that didn't stop me. I went back home. 
drove 12 hours, went back to my dad's house, mm -hmm. and got my Blazer K5 1976 on 44 Super Swampers. Holy fuck. And you drove that thing 12 hours? With a 12-inch lift and went back, and as is this So if that enough, drove you... If it took you 12 hours in a Jetta going north, it took you probably 18 hours going south yeah, it was in that very fucking slow. thing. Holy yep. shit. So then I came back. So that's the big middle finger. Okay, fuckers, I'm coming <laughs> yes. no matter what. You can't stop me. Here's I showed my, up yeah. at the, uh, the show-up yard. Should have parked in the handicap spot. For, for just got out and said, fuck you guys, I'm here, you know? <laughs> so that was funny. Okay. Um, it wasn't even street legal. I bet. Well, for so, those of us, those of you guys watching don't understand how – how unions work or how tough the IBEW can be sometimes. And then also being in Detroit regionally, you know, being a, a journeyman lineman or being an apprentice or and being a lineman, you're supposed to, the union teaches you, you're supposed to support American, support labor. So there's like this unwritten rule. You should have an American car. And today in 2024, it's not as big a deal. Yeah. Guys get away with it. But back in 2003, that was a big deal. I remember when I was an apprentice, um, same thing. I had a Jeep, and then I had a beater car. It was also a Volkswagen. Yeah. And I got so much shit driving that to the job site. Right. I just started driving my Jeep. I was trying to keep the miles off it and save gas. And you know, you have a nice car and you have a beater car. A lot of yes. guys. A lot of guys do that in the trade. Um, but back then, it was a bigger deal. And a lot of guys yeah. they don't even know that how big of a deal it was. But like it, when you're coming up and now you're the new guy, especially in Detroit, especially in Detroit's the motherland, right? And I was in Chicago, which is not too far from there. Yep. Similar. As you go Similar west, mindset. a little, a little mm. get lax a little bit as you go west, but. You know, I can only imagine you're, you're coming in foreign language. Yes. The new guy. Yes. Not trying. You look like you look, right? It's already, <laughs> it's already a problem. So, like, you're trying to not make waves, and then you go out and get the big K5. That's badass. That's uh, a yeah. cool story. Yeah. So, if you didn't wear Carhartt and have an American car, you I didn't know. work in Detroit. Yeah. I didn't even know what Carhartt was. Right. <laughs> what's, so, what's the so. Canadian? I mean, you guys are dealing with cold weather. What would you guys wear up yes. there? Yes. Uh, I can't really remember. We have a lot of different brands, but... But good shit. Obviously, Boy, yeah, so you have to survive. It's very good. Right. Yeah, it's, everything was... Imagine being told you couldn't wear the clothes you wanted to wear because it's not American. It's, it's tough. Yeah. The trade's tough, man. Well, know? today, Carhartt's not really made in USA and all this. So it's a different... It's, it's, it's bullshit. It's even even your Chevy truck is built in Mexico, so it's, it's a whole different yeah. thing anymore, but... Yeah. That's why it used to be a big deal, though, because it actually yeah. was American yeah. back then. It and was, Carhartt's from yeah. Detroit, if I'm correct. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense why they're so hard yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's where I came in and mm -hmm. started working there. And uh, from there, the guys uh, were like, hey, we're going to Wisconsin, work for another contractor at the yeah. time, Hooper. Okay. Um, I work for Hooper, yeah. Yeah. yeah all right. So that's how um, I was like. And back work. then, that's where Hooper came from. So that was yeah, probably they're from they're Madison. pretty small yep. back then, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So they're like, uh, can you check? So my uh, union hall had work visas. So they're yeah. like, hey, yeah, you can go there. There's work visas for Hooper. Nice. So I said, okay. I said, well, let me check what Wisconsin is because I went to work six months in Detroit, and I didn't know what I was going into. <laughs> there's nice parts in Detroit, but there's also bad part. And that was, I think, before the movie Eight Miles. Right. Now, <laughs> pretty rough. And like Detroit's come around. Yeah. 20 years ago was not a place that you're going to enjoy being. But where we work yes. was Hazel Park. Yeah. And that's where you've seen the movie Eight Miles. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it was so pretty like, rough. So like, okay, let's go to Wisconsin. You're like, hey, let's make sure Wisconsin's not another fucking Detroit. Well, that's why I had to the, look in. Yeah. There was no Google on the phone. <laughs> right, so. right. What did you send a pigeon? How do you how do you look it up? What you just do? gotta look at stuff. You okay. know, look at right. books and buy. Uh, oh, there's um, cows. There's cheese and there's beer. I'm in the Atlas book. Yeah, at the road truck Atlas. stop. Yeah, those are so. dude. No shit. I saw a fucking road atlas in a museum. Yeah. in Washington D.C. I was there probably five or six years ago, maybe even more than that now. But I was going. I think it was one of the, whatever D.C. museum. Like I don't know whatever they got a yeah. fucking moon rock there. They got all kinds of cool shit. Yes, I saw a fucking road atlas that I had my hands on at one time. Yeah, and I, I couldn't believe it. That's already in a museum. Yeah, that's well, what we did. Uh, MapQuest. MapQuest was print a out the MapQuest. If you miss then, a turn, you're fucked. Yes. If you had if you had MapQuest, you, you had, had to a, go to a gas station and ask local people. And, yes, you'd have to talk to people, yeah. which is you know frightening for nice. some people. Yeah, but there was. Um, I had a job repairing ceiling fans when I was 16, yes. and I would get the. And I, and I was when I first started driving, I didn't know in Naperville, Illinois, was you know new to me. Yeah, I grew up in Newark, right? So like Naperville was a big city to me. And I, to drive around, I had no fucking idea where I was at. <laughs> so I'd get the printout of MapQuest from every yes. job. But if I missed one turn, my whole fucking day was ruined. Like, yep. I had seven appointments, 
every turn had to be on it's point. It's not that long ago, but a lot has changed, yes. definitely. And in, our, in the trade, too, uh, in yeah. line work. So you say yes to Wisconsin. So, yeah, I went there up, and then right? started as a journeyman there for Hooper and yeah. went work for different contractors, okay. Michaels and Great Lakes and yeah. High Decker, a whole bunch of contractors, and just started traveling from there. That's kind of where it, it took off. How would you get to Colorado? Um, so, again, I was traveling all over the place, and at the time I was working for Henkels and McCoy. Yep. Uh, out of local 702 in West Frankfurt, Illinois. Illinois, yeah, it's one of the highest paying scales in the country. It's pretty good. It's a nice little hidden gem that it is don't very know about. Yeah. very cheap living. Very cheap living, um, very high, high scale. So I was working out there, and uh, again working for for Hooper uh, a few years before that. Mm -hmm. um, the general foreman that I worked for in Wisconsin uh, got a small project here in Colorado. Okay. And called me because they had to do with lattice structures. Yep. And today, lattice structures are kind of a lost art. Yeah, the ones you see have been built for 50 years, <coughs> pretty much. Yes. Right? There's not too and many, not new, many ones going up. new linemen really know what to do with them. Like, yep. And that's kind of what we specialized in where, I'm, where I come from. Okay. Uh, you know, my whole apprenticeship. Little bit of distribution, well, substation. People who don't know what a lattice tower is, those yeah. are the ones that look like a bunch of small pieces of steel put together to make one big tower. Yep. And I think for reasons, and especially in remote areas, it's because the ability to get those smaller pieces together and then it's build it on site. It's lighter and it's very strong you, Right, uh, you can together. travel with those parts, yep. get on site, and then construct them versus these monopoles we see. A big piece, harder to yeah. get a big piece of steel in the middle of nowhere, right? Yep. So like, if there's a highway, much easier to set two pieces of steel, add yes. some arms, and you're good. In the middle of nowhere, you got pretty small little parts like an erector set and build them yes and so like you have this experience and they come and to what we specialized in when i came to the united states doing a lot of uh the the 765 kv lattice structures yeah they're monsters uh, yeah Fuck so come in so here cool. they were like hey there's a 115 kv lattice it was this baby shit like, right? okay yeah yeah uh, but yeah they, they came here as their first contract for, for hooper uh -huh. and uh he asked me if i'd come out here and, and work with him mm -hmm. so i uh end up late leaving um, the uh, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, come out here to Colorado uh, for Hooper. With about out of Madison, we came out here and hauled some equipment. We were probably two crews. Mm -hmm. That's it, and uh, we started doing a little work there. Nice, and that's what took off here. Uh, Hooper didn't exist back what then. What year was here. that? Roughly 2010. Okay. Yeah, Hooper didn't have any office here. That there was nobody here. Yeah, yeah. So it was just us, a few people, uh, some mutual friends we have. Yeah, let's let's get yeah. into that. That's how we met. So let's talk about yeah. how we met. I'm gonna tell my version of the story, then we'll we'll, we'll okay. get into your version because it's obviously two perspectives, right? But yeah, before we do, let's do a cheers. Let's do a shot because us meeting was uh, by, yeah by chance, but it was badass, and I'm super happy to have met you. So let's take a shot. This is my this is a fresh bottle too. Hell yeah. Ooh, this is my favorite tequila, and it happens to be a sponsor of the show. So shout out to Jake at Telstone Tequila. Super cool cat I met. But I was drinking the tequila probably for about two years before I met him. And I'm curious to see. Don't slam it, any big fucking Canadian. Don't be slamming this. Yes, sip it, okay? You got to enjoy this. <laughs> I know how you are. I'm going to have to bring you some uh, had, maple syrup whiskey. I know. Yes, let's do that. Let's have a cheers. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Thank you. Yes. Delicious. Pretty good, right? Yep, I love it. Smooth. Yep, very good. All right, so now we got that out of the way. We meet, and my version of the story is, it's, it's going to be very similar, but I want to, my perspective is different, right? So when I switched from Northwestern Mutual to Penn Mutual, Penn Mutual threw me a big party, big launch party. Like, hey, what do you want to do? You know, we want to get behind you, want to get some advertising, we want to get people out there to know where you're switched, make this whole big fucking event, right? Cool. What do you want to do it for it? Like, well, I'm a big White Sox fan baseball fan the white Sox are in town playing the rockies yep. perfect timing could not have been a better timing and like hey we'll rent out two suites invite 50 people get them out there let them know what's going on and uh invite whoever you want cool so i started posting on social media about this party coming up and you had followed me on instagram about the same time maybe a month before but we just and i, and I just see someone liking my stuff all the time and <coughs> just ticky tacky interaction nothing crazy right and I make the invite about there, make an official launch. Like, hey, man, can I get some tickets? Um, 
at first it was like you were in and then you were out, then you were in, then you were out. You had like back and forth. Like you were going to pick somebody up from the airport or he couldn't commit to going. So I had all these tickets that were sold out. I sold out my 50 allotment. Like, hey, I'm in. Can you get me two more? I'm like, ah, fuck it. So I, I go back to the Rockies. Hey, can I get two more tickets? Cool. And then besides him, there's like three other people that did the same thing to me. So I had to go back to the Rockies. Like, I get like 55 tickets. Like, all right, no more. We're over capacity. Like, no more. Okay. So then I get to this party and he shows up. I have never seen the guy before in person. And uh, he gets there and a bunch of my lineman friends are there too. Got guys from the lo- local union, guys who just helped, I built, built power lines around here in the local area. And I walk in, and this guy walks in. All, he doesn't even see me. He sees all the guys we know together and starts with Nate and, and I don't know who else was even there. <laughs> Will, but like, Will, Will Ashley, yeah. yeah. So all these guys I've known for fucking five years, he hasn't worked with these guys in forever, but he knew them. So like, wait, you're a lineman too? Holy shit. And from there, we hit it off. It was great. So I don't know what your version of that is, but that, that's pretty much how I remember meeting you. Yeah. yeah. Many of those guys 10 plus years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it comes back to working here for yeah. Hooper. Yeah. Um, so that, that was, uh, that was good. No, that was a good night too. Was was yeah. Nice. And we met that night and then from then we've been pretty fucking close. Yep. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Hit it off and I think similar taste and nice things. Yeah. Similar taste in, in the humor we have, right? The fuckery. And, <laughs> Cause we both kind of miss that, right? Because we both have a different careers now. Yes. That we don't get to have that same interaction with the guys at work. I don't know. A, a little bit you do. You, I'm sure you're, you can't say the same shit. No, you used to be able no, to say, no. we know we've said some <laughs> funny dark shit at work, but. We missed that. I think between us, we have that again. It's kind of cool, I think. So Yes, definitely. So cheers to you again. That's awesome. Yes, sir. So um, one thing that we ended up talking about is obviously my, my business in life insurance, and you've got a pretty um, unique story that maybe is relevant because you had a, um, a business outside of line work that was um, hurt by uh, a death in the, in the company. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a few years ago, eh, about four, four, five, four years ago, yeah, yeah. I, I decided to um, start from scratch a uh, HVAC business based out of Colorado. Okay. Um, mechanical contractors yeah. and uh, d- doing all sorts of things related to HVAC. For people who, people and, who don't know, HVAC is heating, ventilation, yeah, air conditioning. Heating, air conditioning. Yep. Uh, we did a little bit of plumbing, gas lines. Okay. We did gas line to fireplace, uh, okay. fire pits, custom backyards. You know, we did kinda, you have a background in that or just like you no, learned it No, actually, your it kind of came through as work, you know, getting out of uh, becoming a line, uh, being a lineman, getting into uh, consulting okay. and inspection. Uh, um, and I had to oversee a lot of uh, modification and new installs okay. for Excel Energy, uh, hmm. replacing a lot of HVAC systems. That's funny. Excel does gas and power. Yeah. You're seeing both. So of them. I was okay. like, okay, I'm gonna have to sign off on this. So I know I need to know what I'm gonna look at. Yeah. And so I study HVAC pretty hard, and uh, to make sure that I would sign off on things that that were right, you know, and installed properly. So that's how it all started for me. And um, then one of my best friend was an HVAC. A technician. He was a, a master mechanical. So he's a journeyman, essentially, right? Yes, yes. And then even like the highest you can get in, okay. in that. Um, did a little bit of everything. So decided to partner up with him and start an HVAC business. Okay. Uh, where we did, again, gas lines, uh, eating and air conditioning, custom work, hood vents, restaurants. Yeah. Uh, you know, exhaust system Probably for it's restaurants. Pretty successful. Yeah, right? yeah. No, it started really good. Again, yeah. through networking, uh, making connections. Um, it, we actually uh, had a lot of a um, lot of successful projects and yeah. was really coming up. And um, out of nowhere, um, it was during the COVID time. Okay. What year was that? 2020? 2020, 2020 so? 2021. Yeah. yeah. And um, before Thanksgiving, he got sick. Couldn't make it to my Thanksgiving dinner. And I went to see him the next day and say, hey, I, there's some food, this and that. But uh, long story short, he ended up, uh, we ended up calling 911. And While he, you're there giving him food? He had to, no, uh, um, couldn't get hold of him. Okay. And I was out of town, mm. actually um, uh, covering a project up in um, Leadville. And I called one of the neighbors to go check on him. Yeah. They found him pretty much unconscious on the oh, on man. the floor in in the house and called 911 this and that 
went to the hospital and uh, he survived, but he was completely dehydrated and this and then. Um, turned out that he all this started he catch he, he caught covid okay but that got into you know lung problems this and then uh, he had a kidney transplant so his immune system he had no immune system yeah uh, so really got sick from that and uh, passed away like five days later oh geez well with that we had a lot of big projects coming up yeah and like multiple townhomes big developments plus all our maintenance routes all their commercial stuff right. Um, so old stuff, new stuff, and uh, now it's boom. all on you. Now it was that was my main guy. Yeah, he's the one pulling permits. Mm -hmm. He's the one doing everything, overseeing the work. You're I still own the business. Yeah, you're still and you're still yeah, basically yeah, still doing my job, other stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was my side gig, trying to build up as your primary but building. Possibly, right? Yes, yeah, that was the goal because mm -hmm. obviously it is very profitable and sure. a very good business. Uh, and had one of the best in the business. He was, uh, you know, a technician and a master technician for 48 years. Oh, wow. So, you know, couldn't ask for a better partner. Right. And he was also um, uh, my uh, Masonic sponsor. Oh, wow. So, so he's a Freemason too? Yes, he I was. I want to get into that after the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm throwing oh, that out. Okay. But, um, yeah, so he, he passed away and then left me kind of surprised with everything and not really having a backup plan. Right. Because you don't think that's uh, like nine months into the new business. Man. Guy's been around forever. We got all ton tons of work. We're, we're profitable. And uh, boom. Gone. It's like, whoa. Now the technicians I have worked under him, couldn't pull permits. Yeah. Didn't have anyone really I trusted 100% to make sure the work is done properly. I'm all kind of looking at you like, what's up? Yeah. yeah it's like, what's whoa. next? And you're like, I... That's what he was for. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm trying to reshape, restructure the company, tried to bring in someone similar to him uh, as a partner, offering ownership. Uh, during COVID, it was just, I, I, it was I couldn't find nobody. Yeah. yeah. And it was a, a new business. So I couldn't just say, hey, come on in. There's 200K a year, right. this and that. You know, I needed someone that's building up the company with me. So that, that was very tough. And uh, trying to... Slowly selling everything, one van after another, and help the technicians start their own company, mm -hmm. and now use them as subcontractors, and me subcontracting all the work. Okay, and it pretty much just became like a broker. Okay, I would still get the calls from the business, and just give the work out, you know, and then take a small percentage. This is your idea of like restructuring. Well, right? I was trying to yeah. save the company, right. and hopefully, someone will come in. And then I can restart like the you way find it a was. New, and you find a new key yeah, man that would just yes, take it off. Yes, exactly. But yeah, it never happened. So no. And and uh, it was going down too fast. And uh, with, with a business like that, you once the calls stop coming in, you they can tell. They it's, stop. They don't keep, they don't start again. No. Right. It, it's pretty tough. So like g going into, you know, what I do for work and, and how that could have been prevented, it was like, you know, nothing's going to bring him back. Right. And yep. it's a, it's a the one tragedy is, not stop. It's unfortunate. But the other tragedy is you lost the business. And those guys yes. that you were working, they all kind of had to scramble. And, and it's not just yeah. one person, right? It affected everyone. So had you had a key man policy that maybe was a million dollars, right? That gets you to a spot where, hey, you know what? We can pause. Everyone keep can kill, still get their money. We can restructure the company. We can we can hire somebody that's worth it. Like you mentioned, let's bring somebody in for 200 grand a year. Yeah, We have the money that could have kept that going. And I think a lot of people... When they start a company, they forget about that happening. Yeah, because you don't think about it. Nobody that. thinks about it. I didn't think about this before I was in this industry. I never thought about it. You, know, you don't think about it. So it's so important to have a key man policy. Any kind of if you enter a business with somebody, and if you're if you're reliant on them to do their part, yeah. It, whether or not they bring in money or not, like if they're doing their part and if they're gone, you're fucked. You've got to have a key man policy. And yes. I think that, you know, being friends with you now and hearing that story is like such a reminder of like what I'm doing is important. And yes. And these people, we could have saved everything. It would have changed everything for me. You don't know. You may not even be doing the job you're doing today. Yeah. Because that could have been taken off and it could have been a whole other thing, you know? We like, had a lot of big, big projects and right. multi-million dollar All you contracts. needed was a little bit of money to buy you over to get the next, because there's another guy out there that you could have found. Yes. Possibly. Yep. Not to, it's a sentimental version of him. He's gone, right? But like. Yeah, it would have never been the same. Never been the same, but you probably could have found somebody to step in that role. Yeah. 
and then build it back up, right? It was yep. a small setback, but not a not detrimental. Well, business is business. You find Correct. someone else, boom, we keep going. Yep. And again, I don't never want to be insensitive to the fact that people die and it's it's sad. You know, it's a tragedy. But the double tragedy is then the business or and family or whatever it may be yeah. is now changed forever. Luckily, you have enough skills and and to keep going on with your life and earning income. And but some, what if you're a single mom? Yeah. Right. What if you were a business partner that didn't have a, a journeyman ticket? Yeah. You know, like a lot of those guys you also were on your company, they didn't have the ability to go out and do what you did. So that it, it's another tragedy that doesn't have to happen. You know. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, and I'm still dealing with it today. You know. How many years has it been? About three years now. Yeah, three years. So. Yeah. It's sad. It's like it doesn't have to happen. No. You, know, and you don't have to do a lot of money. It could have been fifty bucks a month. Just something, you know, just to just to carry the, a policy, term policy. Yeah, definitely would have changed everything. Could have yeah. take care of everyone instead of let them go. Yeah, I end up taking care of them with my own money. Right. To because they were some of them were going through an apprenticeship. Right. And I was paying for all that. So you get pretty intimate with these people, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So a business, I, you're like you're bringing people up. They're yeah. depending on you. Yep. It's almost you could argue it's selfish not to have it, right? Like to, if. You, if not that you knew about it, but if you know about it, and I'm trying to get my word out there, if you know about this and you don't have it, now it becomes selfish. Like, hey, you're not, it's a small bill to yes. save everyone in your company's ass, you know? You know, think about your band members in a band. You know, the lead singer dies, the whole oh, band's yeah. fucked. You yes. know, like, same thing. It's the same concept. You have an integral part of your business. Yeah. Isn't there tomorrow. It's like, now what? Yeah, you know? no, it's a big deal. Yeah. Definitely changed a lot of things. And then... Um it's very hard to recover from that on top of, uh, you know, losing a, a friend. close friend. Yeah. And that's pretty much like family to me and uh, and affecting the business and all the effort. Because I, I started this thing from scratch. I know. It's, it's a The logo, the name, the, the, the structuring the whole thing, purchasing vans and right. get them all. You're just marketing. It becomes a and, double tragedy. Oh, yeah. It yeah. becomes it's not like, just whoa. sad that he's gone. It's like, okay, you couldn't even probably mourn his loss. You had so much going on. You couldn't even like, yes. take the time. To deal with that, like yeah, it was, emotionally, it's it's tough, man. And on top of that, I got put as the executor on his will, oh. so uh, family kind of rejected everything. So I yeah. I ended up doing all that on top of that too. So again, I to, to, I never want to be insensitive to the fact that there's is a tragedy when somebody <coughs> passes away, right? We all know that it's all very sad, but yeah. like the double. What's up, guys? I know you're enjoying the podcast, but I want to pause this. I want to bring some attention to my sponsors, um, Telstone Tequila. I want to go over a few cool little facts with these guys. So they are from Las Vegas, and there's thousands of tequilas in the world. Telstone is one out of only 40 tequila brands that owns their own distillery. So it's super unique. It's a big flex, right? It's really fucking cool. So based out of Las Vegas, super rad. Check them out. Use our discount code FINAD20, TelstoneTequila.com tragedy becomes when uh the rest of that person's bloodline or people that are they're all a, it's a domino effect yes and we can stop that first domino yes the first domino sucks that's not that's not being sensitive but it but that's not going to go away it's it there doesn't, it doesn't have right it doesn't have to continue on yeah and it sounds like there's so many people out there unaware of what a key man policy can do and protect you minimal investment right it's almost like it's like car insurance you got to have it Got to have it. Yeah, so, we're going to change everything. And, you know, even talking today with other people that have very successful business that's been know. in business for 20-plus years, Yeah, they don't even know about it. They've just that. been raw-dogging it, just getting away with it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it, it sometimes brings it back to, like, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? Which sometimes makes me think that if I can think of something, I can't be the first person to think about it. And people, yeah. I'll look up to people who are more successful than me, thinking they know more than me about everything. That's not true. They know more about me in certain lanes, right? But the fact that life insurance is so, so often forgotten about, it's like, okay, well, obviously you are successful in this lane. You're an expert here and you got you here, but you're missing out on a lot of stuff yeah. here. Let's talk. Let me help you. And it's like so many people have their entire eggs in one basket. Yeah. And if that person passes away or someone integral to their company passes away, they have no, no backup plans. Like they don't even think about it. And, yeah. and it's, it's like such a – so I want to get the word out there. And so your story is – very powerful. Thank you for sharing because I know it's hard yeah. to talk about, but like it's so important. Get know? a key man policy today. <laughs> That's a t-shirt. That's a t- I want to get a t-shirt with his face on it saying that. <laughs> Let's bring it up a little bit. That was that was sad. I'm sorry we had to go through that, but that's no, very no, important. Hey, so thank you. Life. But you mentioned the Freemason stuff. Right? Yeah. Let's talk about that. I think all right. Freemasons, um, depending on which website you're watching or which <laughs> yeah. YouTube video, there's all kinds of evil shit and there's these 
uh, demonic uh, symbols yes. and all this underground um, secret society shit yeah. that goes on with it. And I think that makes it so fascinating. So let's hear your Freemason. You're open about it. You're very yeah. public about it. You're very high ranking. Yep. Let's hear about your Freemason story, where it started, where you're at right now. You're always trying to recruit me. I want to hear about this. Um, <laughs> let's hear about it. It's, it's, it's a good story. All right. Maybe you so should first, have a little bit more tequila before we start this. Hey, if you're asking, I'm pouring. I like it. <laughs> so let's let's go into it. All By right. the way, is it a devil worshiping cult? No. Okay. Do you guys drink baby's blood? No. Okay, those are the first two things I've heard. Yes, about. yes, all right? yeah, definitely. I mean, everyone's heard that, right? Yeah. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of uh neat rumors, which probably brings like a um this fascinating like uh secrecy to it, right? Or this um yeah, um, something well, that's not. So, and also full disclosure, my older half brother is a um, a shriner, so he's also a full mason. Yeah, he's a mason, and he's yeah. also I've never talked to him a whole lot about it. Yeah, um, he's never brought it up a lot, but I just know he's. I remember the parades as a kid. Yeah, the, the Freemason. The, yeah, the so we, parades. you know, we don't bring it up, but there's uh, so it is. It, it's not a um, secret society. Okay. It's a society with secrets. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah, that's better. I like that. Society with secrets. So, yeah, yeah. so what's what's important about those secrets and what's the reasoning behind well, them? So for, first of all, what, what we go back to is um, the, the fraternity uh, actually started in Jerusalem during the, the construction of King Solomon's temple. Okay. Um, where they were actually craftsmen. They yes. were stonemasons. Yes. Okay, so that's where that's where all this started. And it was the first apprenticeship and the first uh -huh. union known to men. Um, they would teach each other. They'd be ranking from from master mason yeah. to fellow craft to entered apprentices. And this is just basically passing on the knowledge of yeah, building Yeah, that's what, exactly what, how had, it started. Yeah, yeah. But they were actually doing the work. Yes. Okay, yes. obviously today we don't do that. It changed. Um but when that, did it change? So the reason why it changed, so they were they became very powerful with the knowledge of how to build these structures. How to build these structures, cathedrals, temples, okay. all these things that kings, queens, potentates would would request. Mm -hmm. And um they they just became very powerful by not sharing the knowledge to everyone. Because it's valuable. Yes, yeah, you if you share up. that, especially yeah. back in those days. Yeah. If you don't have anything power, if you're not already rich, full of gold, mm -hmm. spices, whatever it is, you're nothing. You're a it's peasant. Like, look at like, uh, I remember being an electrician because I was an electrician yeah. apprentice before that. I'm they sorry. Basically, I know, right? I, I, I grew up, okay? I did grow up. <laughs> but there was a very brief time when I was an electrician apprentice. And I remember them telling me like, it didn't click to me, but they're like, hey, we got to be careful. We got to protect our knowledge. All it takes is one dude in a van to do this stuff on non-union. Yeah. It's like the knowledge you have is more powerful than anything yeah. else. So like the ability to do the work. Yeah, and it'll do half for and, half your cost. Half, exactly. So like the stonemason, same thing. If they give up that knowledge yes. how to do this. You were a peasant. It then. didn't take much to You were to, nothing anymore. Yes, yeah. You were scraping so breadcrumbs in the village. So call comes from protecting the knowledge. Yes. Okay. And where they got the knowledge still today, we have no Aliens. Clue. Dude, I maybe. I believe in this yeah. myself, but has to come from somewhere. Yep. And this is like crazy geometry knowledge. We're not talking about like little things. Right. It's like, the, it, it's shit. insane. Yes. Um, and still today, you they the, cannot you think, reproduce you this You think the pyramids stuff. were built by Freemasons? I think it, we're slowly finding things mm -hmm. back to, it goes back to that. Okay. And even before that, we, we don't know. Okay. You know, it just goes so far back. It's but cool. We don't know. That's fun. We yeah, yeah. Know. It's kind of the, the nice part, the unknown. The moon, yes. We don't know how the pyramids were made. That's cool. It's, yeah. it's pretty neat. Um, so from there, uh, slowly the, um, you know, the, the kings and all that, were, they didn't build as many temples, cathedrals. All that started to slow down. Kind of slowed down okay. and the, the, the fraternity kind of went dormant. Mm. Where they were no more needed. What time period is that roughly? I would say, oh, would it been like the fifteenth, like twelve or fifteen hundred? Okay, all right. Uh, and then they they just uh, they just went dormant. And back in so the, the constitution that we go back to right now and still today is active. Uh -huh. 
the one we use um, as modern day Freemason uh, was rewrote in 1717 in London. Okay. A group of Free uh, a Mason brothers uh, got together and say, "Hey, you know, we need to do something with this. Uh, gotta resurrect it, make yes, it, make it we valid gotta, again. We got to adapt it, it to adapt the it modern again. day. Okay, seventeen seventeen. All right. Um, so they got together and wrote a constitution and kind of have a structure and uh, started what today is the, the Freemasons. Okay, um, and they started the Grand Lodge of London." And started Little Lodge, Blue Lodge, and all that good stuff, and um, created a sort of a kind of like a Bible, a, 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 the main book for your apprenticeship, what you're learning, how it's just everything. So we all do the same. Okay. So nationwide, worldwide, yes, the same. global, yeah, same global. thing. Okay. So uh, that that's kind of cool. So, so what I went through as my apprenticeship through yeah. the you know the Masonic apprenticeship, yeah. Um, is the same thing as like uh, George Washington, Benjamin okay. Franklin, all all those so when you guys. So travel that came the world; up, it's the same thing, no matter where It's the where same you go. thing. That's yes. cool. You all can right. go to Philippines. You can go. It, it's it's all the same. It's slightly different. Well, for a long time, it was for white men only, right? Uh, in remember, the United States, okay, that doesn't exist outside of here. Okay, uh, I, have a, I have a couple of friends who were. I remember just like asking questions about yep. it, and he mentioned that being a thing at one point. And they've they've not it's, that's gone away now. So right? in, in oh yeah okay uh, but in United States only okay so outside uh, the United States it didn't matter skin color was not it a thing. did not matter okay. that's the one thing why it's so strong ah uh, okay is no matter what religion color your background whatever you are doesn't matter okay so that has nothing to do with that and uh, it's all America was just fucked up there for a while. We yeah, were, yeah. We I mean, it, it was all over the world in, in, in England of, and yeah. France, and uh, well, once we got past all that shit, like, okay, listen, yeah, this is fucking dumb. Let's make it, it one. Yeah, it was like that too uh, in Europe, uh, where you know, so, uh, so, some colors, some people yeah. could not be in, but here they got started with the Prince Hall Masons. Prince Hall, yeah, Prince okay. Hall. Um, he got he went to the uh, Grand Lodge and. Um, was able to get that approved as a real Masonic okay. body. And uh, today's a predominant uh, uh, black uh, Masons. Okay. And uh, while they're so involved today, I do go visit them sometime. And, yeah. Uh, I'm amazed by what they're doing. That's we can cool. definitely learn from them. Uh, awesome. So, so, so to see you're saying to this doing. day, they're still like predominantly black Masons? It just kind of stayed there. Yeah, yeah. Because they started, of obviously, course. you know. The whole thing out of necessity, here. they had to. Yeah, they couldn't they be had part, to. which they had to be segregated. Yep. Which is and, unfortunate. And today's still there because yeah. it's they're not going to dissolve it. Right, they well, work still, hard to get still there. Still, black churches too, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Same doesn't thing. mean you can't go as a white man. Just no, the way it is, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I get it. Um, so yeah, so it it, it kind of got reshaped, restructured in seventeen seventeen in London, and kind of spread out throughout the world, and uh, be, become what it is today. Um, and it's more of a gentleman's fraternity, okay, uh, with uh, good values, and it all revolves on becoming a better person, becoming a better man, mm -hmm. and being an asset to the society, not a liability. Asset to the society, or yes, or everyone's society, like just in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. to the world. To the world. Okay, got it. And. That is why when you look back now, t today we, they're not exposed as much or we just don't create as much. I don't know. But if you look at, you know, just example here in the United States or, or some other, um, you know, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere. Most of our founding fathers were Freemasons. Right? Yes. Yeah. And, and that's the reason why the whole New World thing. They came okay. here to escape the religion yes. and all the, the other stuff that were restricted yeah, because uh, Freemasons are free thinkers. We believe in geometry. We believe in astronomy. We believe in everything. Yeah. Higher power, whatever it is, it's not just set to so one let's go religion, that. one yeah. thing. Yeah, so and, like... And that's I'm, why you see a lot of smart people. I was going to say, so I think I'm hung up on, because I'm atheist, Yes, so I I'm know. Hung up, we know, right? <laughs> I don't, but see, most Christians look at atheists as they worship the devil. 
Yeah. It's not the same thing. No, you and just I, don't believe in nothing. I believe in science. Yeah, yeah I believe exactly. In, if I can't see it, it doesn't happen. Yes. Except the wind. I'll give the wind credit. Yes. Outside of the wind, <laughs> if I don't see it, it didn't happen, right? So you bring up a great point about the freedom. It doesn't matter which religion. It just it needs to be something. So tell me the requirements to be a Freemason. All right. So you have to be a man. Okay. Freeborn. Of good What's freeborn report. mean? That goes way back, you know. So that's like not born into slavery or what? Yeah, you just have to be free from any king, queens, potentate, anything. Okay. So you cannot. Which today belong. almost doesn't. You relate. just have to be free. Okay. Yeah. Which today everybody today's is pretty free. much okay. Yes. Got it. But so you be free. We're talking about the Constitution was written yep. in seventeen during times that we're not. So there was still free. people. Right. They were not able to gather together. They were not able to meet, and that, that's another thing that uh, that's where these secret meetings come from too. Got it. Since the beginning of a time. Mm-hmm. King, queens, all that, the higher power, the royalty, did not like for the peasants yeah. to meet and Congregate. gather together. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where so you to meet become up in powerful. Secrecy. Yes. Yeah. So that's where the whole secret meetings came from. Okay. They had secret ways to meet. The handshakes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, the whole thing. Comes from. So, yeah, because okay. you could not tell anyone uh, you were part of that group. Wow. And that goes not just for Masons. It goes Anything. for any kind of yeah. groups. Yeah. Because so, yeah. a group is power. Exactly. And if you're a king, you don't want power. You don't want that. Yeah, you want people That's bowing why down, all right? this secrecy come from. Okay, so you got to be a man. Yeah. You got to be free. Freeborn. What else? Well recommended. Well recommended. So you can't just walk in and say, I want to be a Freemason. And like, fuck off, nerd. Yeah, you, you got to be well in. recommended okay. and of good report. Okay. And this is by the book. Yep. So that's exactly what so I was told to one time you have to bring it up to your buddy three different times. What? Is that is that a thing? No. No? Um, I was explaining, like, if I bring it up... As to, Freemasons, okay. we don't recruit. We don't go out and say, hey, would you like to be a Freemason? Okay. We can invite you to a dinner, mm-hmm. to a function, or maybe Raffle help tickets. out with a charity. Raffle tickets, right? Raffle, okay. exactly, because yeah. that goes for a charity. Yep. Yep. We give scholarship funds, there's all <clears> kinds of stuff. Um, I was explaining one time, I was like, hey, you bring it up to your buddy once. Yeah, I don't want to be that. Bring it up again. Hey, maybe it's a little bit there. A third well, time is like, okay, you're serious. Is that something you were taught good, to? Or is there something? Rule to, of thumb. Yeah. Okay, rule of thumb. It's right. a good thing because I make sure I get guys, asked all the time. Make sure a guy's not just like a one-off, semi-interested. The guy's got to be pretty interested, interested, right? Yes, and that's the thing. I get asked a lot. Okay. Just like, hey, can you help me out? Uh, I want to be a lineman. Yes. Well, are you going to go out your way yes. right away? Get your CDL. Right. You're going to tell me, hey, go get your first aid. Yeah. Uh, get, go get well, your life CDL. Insurance. Same thing with, with life insurance, people ask me all the time, hey, Tony, I see you're killing it. Yeah. How can I do what you're doing? I'm like, go get health and life licensed. Yeah. We'll talk. And, and, then and beyond that, 95% I'm not, of them will 99%. Not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, I get I get that. You don't want to invest so much time in somebody if they're not exactly. going to invest in themselves. So that's where the, maybe the maybe the rule of thumb of the three-person thing comes in. Yes. Okay. And also you got to know someone three, for, for so three, long. Three, three request thing. Yes. Comes in. Okay. Yeah, the three has nothing to do. It's just kind of a, you want to make sure you know the person. First of all, you have to know that person for so long. Got it. Is a requirement there? Yes. Okay. What's the requirement? Can you can you say? No. Okay. Fair enough. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, let me see. All right. So there, there's a lot there's of things There's some secrets like that. still we can't talk about. I like that. I mean, yes and no. It's just. That's okay. That's cool. I like it. Got to keep it. I like, I yeah. like the secrecy. It's fun. Yep. It, makes, it keeps it fun. Um, but then th- that's the thing is a lot of people want and not a lot of people do. We well, can't bring in a, a kid fucker. You can't bring in a... No. Da- you can't bring and, in and some... And you go through a background check. Well, it looks bad on you, right? Like yes. You, if you bring some dickhead in who's, I want to be a Freemason, and like, okay, I've been with this guy for about two weeks. He seems all right. Yeah. Then he comes in and he's actually got this really dark past or yes. this dark energy that you don't even know about yeah no that's it takes time to learn that about somebody so it makes sense why these things are in so place I, lo- be, I love that these rules were well thought out because it, it it's like why well, it protects it, the fraternity thought about, it, it's, prote- it's thought about mm-hmm. so many things just like our founding fathers yeah for the first you know ten uh, the, the ten amendments like yeah they thought about the bill of rights rather well yeah they, they thought about they everything thought about the shit and, and that's because like, they survived. were They've been through some shit. Yes, yes, and they were trying to free themselves from all yes, that. So right. they want to make sure it did not come back here. They, want, they don't want to do it over again. No, like, and that's why they came here. Yeah. And also, that's why 
Uh, that's why, an example like George Washington, you see so many Masons on the Declaration and uh, all that stuff, because um, he surrounded himself with like-minded with brothers. People. Yeah, okay. Mason brothers, because we all have a very strong obligation towards each other. The moral, the moral compass is overwhelmingly yes. positive, right? So he knew he can trust those guys. So going, getting back to the requirements. Yep. So we got the the man. Born free yep. and recommended. Well recommended. Yep. What else? And a good report. And a good report. Okay. So it's just be that's a good it, though. Just gotta be okay. a good person. So basically it's and you gotta have someone that knows you that's already a Mason. Got it. That would vouch for you. That would sponsor you. Yep. So that goes back to your business partner. Yes. Who's your that's sponsor? Got you into this yep. thing, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And what so. year would he get you in? What year did you start your journey? I think it was about ten years ago. Okay. Roughly. And you're at the highest level. Right now, to my understanding, sort of. Um, your Instagram handle mentions the thirty-two. Yeah, uh, so there is so in Freemasonry, there's thirty-three degrees. Okay, you can obtain or learn from one to thirty-two. Okay, you cannot learn or do anything to to obtain the thirty-third. It's a uh, would you say an honorary degree? Okay. So it is a someone's got to give you that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that just how comes many with get time to that. I, I'm wise. not sure how many people, but it is so the in Washington D.C. we have a uh, 33rd degree Supreme Council. Okay. There's 33 men that the the whole country is divided by Orients, and uh, you have uh, uh, 33 of them, and they decide, they control how many 33rd degree can be in the United States. Um, so it's how not many, something... How many are there now? I am not sure. There's not too many. More than 100? 500? Yeah, yeah. There's a... Uh, okay. Yeah, there, so basically, when you get to 32, you're kind of just waiting for the 33rd, and it may never come, right? Yes, uh, yes. You can be a 32, the 32nd degree yeah. your whole life. Yeah. And be, be happy, a very good mason, yeah, be happy to doing be everything you yeah, can, yeah. but... So it, your point, 10 years in, you've reached yep. the highest degree you can within your control. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. So the uh, we call them Blue Lodge. That's why the, all the little Masonic Lodge you see throughout yeah. the little town, city, everywhere. Those are Blue Lodge. That's where you become a Mason. That's where you do your apprenticeship. And that's where you are initiated, do your first, second, and third degree. Most important one, the Master Mason, third Number degree. Third, okay. From there... As a master mason, you can join other bodies of Freemasonry, mm. which I'm sure everybody heard of the Shriners. Yes. Shriners Hospital. Some older half brothers of Shriner, yep. Um, the Knight Templars. Never heard of that one. Yeah, just the, the old Templars. You know, yeah. the, 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 the knights with the white cross, uh, the, the red cross. Okay. Um, so. There, there's a whole bunch of different bodies. Within that, the Scottish Rite. Okay. Freemasonry is where it's sort of like the University of Freemasonry. And that's where you can learn from the fourth to the 32nd degree. Okay. From there, you graduate as a 32nd degree, and now you're a Scottish Rite Mason. Is that where you are now? I am, yes. I am a 32nd degree. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. I know for you, it's a a big deal. It's a big part of who you are. And I I love that you give that. All those degrees, most yeah. people have what is in it. All, every degree in Freemasonry is about making you a better person. Okay. And becoming an asset to the society. What are you going to do for the society? Yeah. What are you going to do for the world? Right. Are you just going to sit on the couch your whole life? Right. Like bring up something. Yeah, fuck that. You're not even, yeah. Can't, do something can't good that. for people, for the world. That's a huge thing in Freemasonry. Um. But that does not replace your Blue Lodge. So, so I am an your... officer okay. at my Blue Lodge where I started as a Freemason, which is in Brighton, Colorado, Brighton Lodge number 78. And that's where it all started. For you. That's where my sponsor brought me. Okay. At the time he was an officer there. Mm-hmm. There's a line of officers. And um, so actually next year, if I get elected, I will be president of... You will get elected. The, the you will. I know you. Everywhere you go, everyone loves you. I have not met a single person 
And I met a lot of people that know you. Not a single person has ever said a single fucking bad thing about you. That's a rare feat because as well-liked as I am and as well, whatever you want to say about me, I, I guess a lot of good things about me, okay? There's people out there that hate me. <laughs> I don't know a single person that hates you. Oh, hopefully and that's, that's and impressive. I try to be. Well, that's impressive because it's not easy to do because some people who are well-liked by everybody are kind of fake in their kiss asses, right? Yeah. I've, I, you're the only person I've ever met that – that is liked by everybody, but because most people like that, I don't like. Yes. If you're liked by everybody, I'm like, fuck you're doing so. Yeah, fuck I know. You, <laughs> you're sucking someone's dick. Yes. You're not a real person. Yeah. You're no, not. You're it. not real. You're not authentic. You're the only person I know that's authentic and still well liked by. Everybody. And well, it's a you. very rare feat. I want you to understand that. And and maybe no one's ever told you that. Maybe someone has told you that. But that's a really rare feat. I and would, um, thank you. It's right, a big deal. A I want you to understand it's a big deal because I'm. I have my. I really think most people are full of shit. Yeah. Okay. And you can understand that too. Oh yeah. And to be as well liked as you are and not full of shit is is remarkable. And I think we've talked about that in in, in small sentences before. I want to be really yeah. highlight that because it's a big deal. Uh, it's, I, it's a big I, deal. I would, um, you know, a lot a lot of it has to do with being a mason, actually. Yeah, I was going to um, get to that because yeah, you know, I, I always got along with most people and mm -hmm. always been a people person and and you're friends with people who are not friends with each other yeah, yeah you're like i'm friends with this guy yeah i'm friends with this guy i don't care they hate each other i'm so and that's a really uh noble thing to be and it's like it's hard for me because i'm 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 really loyal yeah not, not that you're not loyal no, but no, i'm like yeah. if someone hates him and i like i'm like well, fuck him anyway right like blindly, yeah. blindly that doesn't mean it's right i guess it all depends on what level Whatever happened yeah, to that person? Yeah, kid, I'm sure you wouldn't. wouldn't yeah, no, no. But like to a point, like you're so well. Um, but if they just had a little argument, and decide not to talk to each doesn't other, doesn't care. You're like, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't affect that's, me. That's pretty awesome, yeah. man. And, and 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 like people love you for that. And I think it's. Thank you. I think a lot of people could learn from you from that. That's I think that goes cool. back to Masonic values. Okay. Um, could and, they change me? Because I don't like that. Could they? Could they? Could they fix me? They can't. You have to uh, fix yourself. Okay. All right. I like that. But. It provides you with the knowledge to do so. Okay. Were you always like that? Were you always well liked? I would say yes. Yeah, but I was not always a good person. I think we're very similar there. I've, I've done been, a lot of stuff in yeah. my life that still today I cannot forgive myself for. Yeah, um, I was a very different person twenty, thirty years ago. You and I are very. Like, I think <laughs> I've always been well liked, but I would agree with that. I could. There's a lot of things I would do differently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, you're the as much as we're both very similar, like you're universally loved. That's that's a really unique, unique thank thing. You. That's cool. Appreciate that. Maybe you don't yeah. know that. I want you to make sure that you, yeah, you thank know that. You. And I think you get a I think you get it, but I also don't think you really understand how 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 what the levels there are of that. There's levels of that too. Like somebody like, oh yeah. so and so is coming. Cool. Love to see him, right? You are in a whole different level of stratosphere of that. Like every room you're in. <laughs> you're, you're well and thank you to going back to our uh, event back at benjamin's the other night everyone's there to, and you're like hey hold on I'm, <laughs> i want to highlight somebody here and you highlighted me you you, yeah. you shouted me out and you didn't, didn't have to do that and then you're like well what was the question again like <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> like but like you're you like said you're universally loved it's, it's a cool it's it's great to be your friend thank it's fun you. to be your friend yeah but yeah those uh so there, there there's a saying in masonry uh to stay a a, a a good person and, and keep growing as a better person is to live by the tools. By the tools, okay. Yeah. So in masonry, before they use all the tools, you know, yep. to carve stones and all that. And uh, whenever they reshape the fraternity. 1717, right? Yep, exactly. Um, I'm, I'm, I can, they didn't want to They didn't yeah. want to drop all the tools because they meant so much. Ah. How you use a compass, a square, the plum, the level, the trowel. Do all these all tools these have symbols today, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. that's what's on the you know, square and compass. All right. Um, that's the main, you know, the mason emblem mm -hmm. is the square and the compass and uh, with the G in the middle. Um, by the way, the, the G can mean a lot of different things. but Gangster. Yeah, that's a gangster. Grenier. 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 Gangster Grenier, double G. <laughs> I was going to call you double G. <laughs> so, um, it. but it, it can be uh, a geometry and, okay. and a god. Okay. And again, god. Any god. 
Exactly. So what if I was able to at least understand, like, I'm atheist, right? We've talked about yeah, yeah, which yeah. is leaving me out of the, this group. But what if I was able to say, You're you know atheist, what? but I don't think you're really, like, an atheist. Oh, let's, well, tell me then. Tell me what I believe. Let's hear this. No, but like you say, you believe in science and all that. Yeah, I think there's a, what intelligent design. Yes, but so maybe there's that's something. That's what if I can open up Freemasonry is about. My, if I can open up my mind and say maybe somebody did something. Yeah, that it's me huge. In? Is that it? Is that enough? All that's what we believe: astronomy, geometry. Okay. So maybe there's all, hope for me. Is what you're saying? I really, I'm, I'm pretty hard on the atheist paint. I go pretty hard as an atheist. Oh, now. I know. But here's the other thing. I want to, I want to get this out there. Too. But maybe. I know what you believe in, and you're a good person. What's up, guys? I'm sure you're enjoying the podcast. It's fucking awesome. I know. Okay. But let's talk about one of my sponsors, Alpine Moving Company. So we all know that moving sucks. Okay. Stop asking your buddies to fucking move you. It's always a problem. We know that. Be an adult. So use Alpine Moving Company. They know how to get the shit done. They offer residential and commercial moving. Also, they will move you anywhere within North America, anywhere in the lower 48, Canada, Mexico, and they're going to hook you up with 10% off. So discount code MOVE24. Make the right move. Thank you. And I want to get that out there because I think there's so many, a lot of Christians specifically that that believe if you're atheist, you are a devil worshiper. Yeah. And a bad person. Yeah. It's like, man, I'm not a bad person. I, I, pretty, I stand pretty hard as the atheist, like mainly because I, don't, I just don't believe it. Like there's so many yeah, stories yeah. in the Bible that it's like, man, man. And that's okay. And that's okay. And I think that's, I think there's, I wish there were more people accepting of that than. I think Christians can be really hypocritical. It's like, yeah. man, like I, any religion and any too much of, of something is yes. bad. I think. And I think equally that they're all silly. Yeah. I don't ever shit on anyone's religion. It's like, hey, man, it's not for me. I'm cool. If you're Buddhist, Muslim, yeah, Christian, whatever you are, yeah. dude, we can be friends. Yeah. We can be friends. I do not care. Yes. It's like, but when you start looking at me differently, because I'm atheist, like, man, that's yeah. pretty fucked up. Like, yes. So I think. That's what I want to. I want to get out there. Like I can be a good person. Yeah, and and not fuck kids or not yes. be a you know not kill anybody. <laughs> that always helps. That helps, right? And not kill anybody. I can live by this quote, this yeah, code, yeah, yeah. and still not believe in like this high whatever. And, so and like you know, that's kind of what uh, Freemasonry is about: is freedom of that acceptance. Yeah, and that's a hard thing to do. Yes, and that took me years and years. Right, I was always pretty easygoing. But still, we always judge. You know, that's, that's a nature. We judge and we joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We make we make bad jokes. Yes. They're but, funny to us, but they're terrible jokes. Yes. But giving that. But up. that really helped me. The acceptance is huge, and once yeah. you start, once you master that, it changes your life hmm. as a person and everything else in your life. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into our our. Um, yeah, we can go on with Freemasonry for a long for time. There's so much to talk about. We can it's do a fun, whole though. other. We'll do, we'll do a part two. I'll definitely come yeah. back here just for that. I I, I know you will, and I, I'd love to have you back for that. Let's talk about your your new career. Yeah, and it's not really that new because yeah, new ish, newer than you know. I I built power lines for yes. a long time. I now do life insurance and financial investing. Yeah. You built power lines, and you're still in that world, but you're not. Yeah, I still you don't build have, power lines. You don't have a, a you don't have a low wrench. And a, and, a, and a hooks on your feet, right? No. So you, but you're still building them in a different... And when I started, there was no low wrench, too. I know, right? I know. <laughs> there was a fucking crescent wrench. A, that's a, it. Crescent a, wrench, yep. flat screwdriver, and a hammer. Wrench, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's fun, yeah. Yep. Which is cool. So I think that's why we bond so well. We have this, the same roots. Yes. In the dark humor, all that shit. So, which is funny because we didn't start... Oh, what year did you start? 2003, you said? Uh, 99. 99. Yep. I started in 08. All right. So from 99 to 08, there was harness requirements. Yeah, I didn't have any of that. Right? FR requirements. Yeah, that was just starting. Yep, yep. And then there was a low wrench you're talking about, right? Yeah, all these fancy tools that people created and T-shirts and stickers. and Well, that's a whole – that's beyond me. I'm talking about from when you started to when I started. Yeah. Even then – I yeah, it was still when, like, I, when, yeah, when yeah. I first started, we were getting FR pants. Yes. And that was so new that people were bitching about it still. Oh, yeah, it's too thick. It was fucking nasty, right? The <laughs> FR pants would stand up by themselves. Yeah, it was not I've got like photos. Today. You can take a pair of fucking pants. It was like somebody cummed all over them. Yes. They're, they're fucking <laughs> stiff as a cum sock. And it would stand yes. up by the. They were nasty, right? Yep. So people would bitch about them. It's like, but I, but I came in, that was already a requirement. Yes. But it was like that year. That's how new it was. Yeah. The harness requirement to me is funny because that was already a thing, but like people I worked with 
didn't have that requirement. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they had a body belt. Yeah, it was slowly and, getting and guys were implemented. Break, so after I came in was the buck squeeze. Yep. That happened after I was, so that was, I got to see one of those things, right? And the buck squeeze is funny to me because a lot of guys will bitch about the buck squeeze. Old timers yeah. will. And my argument to them is like, well, if you old fucks weren't falling off of poles and killing yourselves, yeah. we wouldn't have a fucking buck squeeze. Yeah, you yeah. blame the new kids for the old shit. It's, it's your fucking fault. If the old people weren't fucking falling off, yeah, but just let them fall off. I agree. I fuck especially that was old, part of the job. I, that man. was part. That was a fun part. Ah, oh, this guy is gone. But the part I of, fell off a pole. The, the point is like, if it wasn't for those old fuckers falling off the pole, yeah, they wouldn't have the new guys in the puck squeeze. But the old guys are bitching about it. Like you caused this. You yeah. did this. You and your generation. Fucked out our eyeballs. But how we're not supposed to fall off once in a while? I know. Happened. I agree. I agree to that. Yeah. But it happened at a rate so fast. It is. They yeah, required yeah. a buck squeeze, and the guys who required the buck squeeze are the guys bitching about it. That's just it's comical to me. Oh yeah. No. You definitely. old fuckers who are crusty as shit, drunk I, as fuck every goddamn yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, we drink on the job. You guys are the ones who required the buck squeeze, and they're going to make fun of the new guy because he has to learn on the buck squeeze. It's like. It's just hypocritical. Just make, I'm really good at putting out hypocrites. Make everybody like, weak. Yeah, well, but you old fuckers <laughs> kept falling off fucking poles. You know, it's your fault. Oh, but it's fun watching the evolution of the trade. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what's the next iPhone moment? Oh, dude, I was on you know? um, just recently right now, like, talking about, uh, you know, my, my newer career. Yeah. Um, that this uh, big project uh, I have right now. The biggest project uh, in the country? Right now is, yes. There, you, there's a couple of them yeah, about to come out no, right now. No, this is the best one right now. Right now, right now, 2024. It is the biggest, the biggest one in the country. project in the country, and Stefan's running. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's, um, it's um, the Colorado Power Pathway. Yep. Uh, here in, in Colorado. It doesn't just run through Colorado, though. Talk about the whole project. Uh, actually, so that particular project is Colorado only. Uh, it ties in with Wyoming and Utah, right? Uh, no, no, okay. not that one. Uh, that would be uh, more Gateway. Gateway. And we, there's okay. a few other projects coming up, the Trans West and a few other ones like that. Um, so power, th Colorado this power one Pathway is exclusively is, Colorado. Yes. All local 111. Yes, it's tying in all the locals pretty much because we cover so much ground, five to 700 miles. Okay. 500 to 700 miles total of a um, transmission line, 345 kV. Um, That's a lot of line, dude. Yeah, multiple substations, upgrades, new ones, expanding. A new all substation. Let's talk about what it takes for a new substation to go out. That's a lot of work. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A it's, new substation. Or just like, acquiring the land. Yeah. You know, and just the, uh, we have a big group you gotta talk of. Off, you got to talk to the pissed off farmer. Everybody. Who doesn't yeah, want to yeah. sell. A lot of city that, council. Yeah. Fuck, uh, dude, what a uh, nightmare. County commissioners meetings. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things. Uh, a huge group involved. You know, yeah. as linemen always see, it's like, ah, we can do. Yeah. There is so much behind the yes. scene. There's a massive group of people that work. By the time you're setting that pole, yes. thousands of hours. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my yeah. goodness. I and cannot and believe it. And lawsuits and I cannot believe how many people are involved. Yeah. So tell me, tell so me on your day-to-day what's your day -to -day, what's your day -to -day work like right now? What's, re what's required so of us to my, find? My responsibility is I'm, a, I'm overseeing all field operations. Okay. Um, and I'm a direct report for all the um, Excel Energy Quality Control inspectors. Okay. Also our Excel Energy Safety Department for the pathway. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, um, a team of concrete inspectors also that uh, I'm a direct so check out all the brakes, make sure they're all good. Everything, yeah. So yep. they test the concrete yep. before it gets poured. Also, um, um, when the uh, civil work is done, so some of the uh, dirt work and all that stuff, mm -hmm. uh, compactions and and the humidity, so you're overseeing and moisture. A lot. You really are in charge of this project. Yeah, it's it's the whole project uh, from civil, structural, electrical, safety, stormwater. Mm -hmm. Uh, environment uh, environmentalist. Yep. So, so you go from hanging off a top of a pole, yeah, yeah. yelling down at people with yeah, obscenities. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and now you're the guy who's <laughs> in charge of everything. That's a pretty uh, wild yeah. ride, man. Yeah, it was. Definitely, How's that happen? How's that definitely? A how big do you even change. go from being a, a a you're basically a book two hand, right? Yeah. How do you go from being a book two hand to working at Excel 
and then being a charge at Excel. How's that happen? Consistency. Okay. All right. Showing up. Hard work. It's hard. It's hard. Just showing up, right? Yeah. That's the main part. Show up every day. Hard work. Um, being just, likable helps, right? I mean, and also being yeah, proficient yeah. at your job. Yes. You couldn't be likable and a bum. So I've always been like very organized, little OCD. Okay. Things have to be straight. Yeah. A lot of notes, a lot of. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that helped me quite a bit uh, through my journey, uh, my career, you know, uh, apprenticeship, becoming a journeyman lineman. Yeah. Uh, becoming a crew foreman, a general foreman, a superintendent, an inspector. Uh, all these things. Just being consistent. Just being consistent and organized. Organized, okay. That really, really, and and um, again, just accepting, acceptance, acceptance okay. is a huge thing, because uh, and not judge. So what I'm hearing with acceptance is you take care of the things you can take care of, and the rest takes care of itself. Yeah. You believe in that? And you I cannot be power hungry. You okay. have to know how to delegate. Yeah. And also... You know, not everybody is born to be a leader. This is true. There's people that do good work, good people. They show up. The they do hard work. Gonna the best is a good lineman. But and that's okay. Not a good leader. Yes. And for some reason, I always been more on the leader side of things. I always took charge. Yeah. Always been organized, taking notes. You know, just keeping things on track. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So so that that definitely helps quite a bit um and, and and that brought me up without even knowing it i was just doing just it just because it's just the way i am and you, i think guys like you and i just do what we're supposed to do yeah not realizing that's, that you're excelling we're yeah just doing what we think just yeah, i had no yeah. idea i yeah. was good yeah exactly just, yeah this is why I'm, this is this is the task cool i'm gonna fucking do it the best i can yes and oh i'm i'm better i, I didn't think i was better I was just doing what i was just yeah. doing my well, job just a quick example going back to hvac yeah. You know, XL Energy was counting on me to make sure their contractors are installing these things properly. I'm not an HVAC guy. Right. But, but you I say, have... you know what? That's my job, and I need to make sure that I do that for them. Yeah. Because they're paying me. Right. They're paying the bills. It's just being good at like So just... I started studying like yeah. crazy, purchase all kinds he says of books. Studying. He went to fucking YouTube University. He's yeah. <laughs> Hey, YouTube <laughs> is great. But honestly, like being resourceful. But using you being all resourceful. resourceful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. all kinds of stuff out there anymore. It's not yeah. like you have to ask your grandpa about it. Right, right. You know, it's just, so I just study like crazy, bought all kinds of HVAC books like I'm going to school. Yeah, but that's that OCD part coming back in, right? Like some yeah. people. Well, well I want to be at well, the top. Well, some people want to treat that. Of it, yes. I, don't treat it. Don't don't fuck up your formula. People, no. So many people want to, they, they, they want to fix what's going on. Yeah. His mic, yeah, yeah, he's dropping it. It's this middle, this middle joint. What you guys are talking about? Yeah, just fixing the OCD part. <coughs> I think it's this one. Yeah, that's fine. Same, same thing. Yeah, there you go. Okay, just turn your knob. Ten four. I'll turn my knob. Fucking dork. <laughs> uh, I knew this episode was going to go long, and I'm fine with it as long as you're good. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's go into goals. So goals. We were, at, we were at Benjamin's event the other night. Oh, yeah. And you've got, you're working with him on some uh, other outside shit. Like, yeah, what's yeah. your goal, man? What is, what is, um, when you're on your deathbed, yep. what do you have, what if, what would you have had to accomplish to, to die at peace? I can do that today. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel all right. What I've done, what I've done. And really? Yep. Yeah. So I, I struggle with that. But there's more. I struggle with that because I don't know if I'll yeah. ever be more is more for me, right? I want I want more. Well, if I, yeah, if, of I did, if I made it to here, if I made it to here on this day, yeah. well, what the fuck could I do in six months from now? What could I do? So well, there's me, always more. Yes. So, but if but it you, had to end right now, yeah, you're cool. I'd be happy with it. I'd be I guess yeah. I would probably look back, but you know what? I wouldn't be disappointed I where I left all my loved ones. Fair. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. that's tough to be there. Especially with my life insurance. That's right. Little plug there to <laughs> Anthony Ficarra. <laughs> <Ten years old. laughs> Got him set the fuck yeah. up, right? That, but also, uh, we can joke about that, but it's important. No, right? yeah, it is. Because it like, is a huge deal. As far as, as hard as we want to go every day and getting better and better and better, if we get hit by a fucking train that goes by here in 15 yeah, minutes, keeps my rent low, um, 
He does, by the way. It's nice. Is there a train? <laughs> the fucking oh, train. there is a train. Trains come by all the fucking Damn. time. We got pause. It keeps the rent really low. It's nice. Yeah. You know? But it's so, a, it's but a new happens, building. Looks nice. It's nice, yeah. But if that happens, family's good. Yes. That's one thing I ain't got to worry about. Yeah. Family's good. Yeah. I can go as hard as I want here and not even worry about that. So people need to remember, like, is if you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you're trying to do things yeah. to get ahead, like, get your life insurance right because you stop thinking about it. You're just going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's know cool. where I'm at today um, as far as financially – and uh, what I've accomplished in my career, uh, my well, name. Long, your name is the best. I'd and say. yeah, you're doing good there. Also on uh, you know with all my other interests as a Freemason, what yeah. I've accomplished uh, in, in the fraternity. Um, I, I wouldn't be disappointed. I'd, I'd be okay. That's tough. That's tough, man. Cause I, I don't yeah. know. I think I about that thing, pretty hard. I, I feel like I want to do. Of course, I want to do more. I want to do more, and yeah. that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, and you're doing more, and we're doing more. We're doing, and I think um, the networking, the networking you have is basically a big... made networking your priority. It's a in, lifestyle. In your life, yes, your networking is a lifestyle. I want to talk about that because that wasn't. I'm new at this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just. I'm in your shadows. I'm following you. You've got me set up with so many people that they love me, but I never would have talked to them without you. Yeah, that's so, the power of networking. Exactly, and you do so well with that. So where did you learn that? What and what made that a priority for you? You know? Because as linemen, we don't think about that, right? No, we you don't power think about lines. We're like, hey, all. fuck you guys. I don't want to see you till tomorrow morning. Yes. And I'm going to see you tomorrow morning. I don't want to. It's not part of. We go home, and we want to turn it off. our daily routine. So how or, did you make that a priority? You know, I was so doing it good at without it. knowing it. Okay. And I got to say, um. Cars was a ah. huge thing. And, you know, I've always been a car guy. Always owned nice cars, nice trucks, motorcycles. You had the Hummer, you had the bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then way before that, do all kinds of trucks. And Also, he had, yeah. as his official financial advisor, he called me one day <laughs> asking if he should buy this Lamborghini. <laughs> and what did I tell you? Yes. I said, fuck yeah, buy that <laughs> motherfucker. Because here's why. Two things. One is... I recognize the networking thing now. At, at that point when you had the conversation with I, yeah. I recognize the value there. I also recognize you already had your life insurance set up. You're already yeah. investing. You're already set. It wasn't you weren't blowing money you didn't have. No. This is money okay, cool. He's got all these check marks done plus networking. Fucking buy the car, dude. Yeah. I don't like the yellow. I like your yellow. Yeah, it's a nice yellow. I don't like pearl white yellow, yellow typically. Yeah. That's my one dig. I was like, man, I don't like the yellow, but otherwise, fucking buy the car, bro. When you see in the sun, it's it's nice. Oh, even at night, I think it's better at, at night. At night, yeah, night, with some lights. Night with all oh, dude, this car yeah. is so sick. So anyhow, I'm his official financial advisor. But, and, um, <laughs> yes. to buy the buy the fucking car. Yeah. yeah. It's worked for you with the networking, man. It's doing yeah, good. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always had nice stuff. I always been a car guy. I always loved all fast cars, trucks. Yeah, all that stuff, and um, one day, I we I bought a Audi S8. Okay, and that was my first luxury car. I bought a lot of nice stuff, but they were never at that level. So I purchased that and just going, not knowing anyone here, just just going to car meets, knowing never and anyone. Went to Bendemir one day, and the uh, Audi group of Colorado, Josh and, and and a few other guys that started that group, they were at Bendemir racing their Audis. Okay. S6, you have to have yours RS7, there, seven, yeah. R8. This, like, I just parked mine up top. I was just watching the race. I yeah, just, yeah. Nothing to it. And then they noticed my S8 in the parking lot after the race. They stopped and waited for me to get back to my car. So they, Wow, that's a beautiful Ooh, car. Yeah, yeah. We meet every Sunday at Red Rocks at 1030. This and that. You should come out whenever you can. We'd love to have you. And that was the beginning of the group. That was the beginning of you networking, like recognizing. Hey, yeah, wait but a I minute. had no clue. Wait a minute. There's someone who recognized me for something besides building power Because I didn't have a business. I, I wasn't You're still an entrepreneur. Power? We're still a lineman? No, I was still doing consulting okay. you know, and all that. I've been doing but that for nine, going, ten years I didn't now. want to get off too far topic here, but like. When I left line work, yeah, I recognized that when I was building power lines, my identity was alignment. Yeah, do you did you have that moment too? Like, oh man, I'm not just a fucking line. I'm a man first. Like, did you have yes. that moment? 
Well, I would it's always, tough. that's all I would, you know, I'm a lineman. That was my Same. main thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's tough when you when you leave that. I build power lines. Now what? If that's gone, what am I? It was tough for me. It was tough, it was tough having that realization of like, I was different, right? Yeah. It's that one, the far one, I think. I got it. I don't know. These mics are. I got it. All right, perfect. Um, Yeah, so. So you go to the parking lot. They say, hey, yeah. man, come out and join us. So I went the next Sunday, yeah. talk to everyone, meet a lot of cool people. And that was kind of my first, because all I did back then was work out. Yeah. I went to work, and I worked out. I was 310, 315 pounds. Look, if you're, if you're listening audio only, this guy looks like Braun Strowman from WWE. <laughs> you got the beard. He's fucking eight feet tall. He's, he looks like so Braun Strowman. Was, right. I, I was a lot, di- you know, I, that's all I did. It was worked out. Big arms, big, you know, just yeah. that was my main thing. Eat six, seven meals a day, did not drink, didn't go out to eat. I went to work 10, 12, yeah. 15 hour days, hit the gym twice a day, eat all day, sleep eight hours every day, didn't go out. Yeah. And all I did now, finally, I bought that car because I had a couple classic cars before that, which I still own, but I've seen them. They're badass. Yeah. 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 And um, then I went to this meet. And that's where I finally got to mingle with people outside of work. Yeah. And uh, the gym. With well, gym can be good, but you know, you're in there. When, yeah. when you're, it depends what you go for at the gym. Some people talk, this and that. Yes. I was on a mission. Yes. You know, I was jacked. You can either go on a mission, As, stare at tits yeah, and ass, yeah, yeah. or go there and fuck around and talk to people, right? Like, yeah, I did all of them. <laughs> uh, but like, I know what you're saying. You can't always no, have a social life. I was life very in the gym. dedicated. Yeah. Now you have this new outlet. Hey, my, so my, life is there. Work, my life is working gym. Yes. Now this whole new world opens up. Yeah, and then yeah. I meet a lot of friends today that that I introduced you to. Uh, I kind of started there. Okay. From there, I've I've met people with Porsches and and Lamborghinis and different people that kind of belong to the Volkswagen group. You know. Okay. With Volkswagen being the owners of Audi, Bentley. Going back to your Lamborghini. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back to back Volkswagen, in Detroit, right? right? Um, what so I met a lot of people there, and from there they're like, "Hey, you know, uh, we have another car meet." Different group that I met there. Hey, we have another car meet, or we have this little fundraiser, or we got this ride, this cruise, yeah. or hey, we're going to dinner. Should join us, and that's how it all started for me. I yeah. showed up in my S8, which is a very nice Honorable executive yep. sedan. Yes, that's faster than my Lamborghini. That I know, I right? Today. Yes. Yeah. So I live in the Mercedes world. Bro. Yeah, same and that's thing. like this S sixty three, right? S sixty three. That's a fucking rocket yes. ship. It is a sleeper car, yeah. faster than my Lamborghini, yeah. probably. Right, depending on oh, yeah. whatever. Zero. I mean, on a straight yeah, line with honestly. all wheel drive. Right, it's a yes. bad motherfucker. The networking of cars today is huge. It's huge. You go back in our parents' days. Yes, that didn't exist. No, it was, it was, it was hot rod there. muscle yeah. cars and it was a bad, you know, it was a bad no, crowd. Nothing bad there. It was a bad crowd, right? But now it's like it's a good crowd. Yes. And same with watches. Let's talk about your watches. Because you yeah. are kind of like me with watches where we recognize that they feel good, right? Yeah, you yeah. They cool feel watch good, on, right? yes. But then there's a whole thing of like, hey, what watch are you wearing, buddy? Let's yes. talk. Now we're going to talk, right? Yeah. It's, it's a, a nice it's conversation, conversation piece. Yes. And I, I think that people, I never understood wearing ten to $30,000 on your wrist yeah, it's nice. as, as a building power lines. Yeah. It was like fucking dumb. Wow. That's a truck, bro. That's yes. A trailer. That's a new camper. It's a new fifth wheel right. or a new, new Harley. Right. Right. Now we're like, that's a new opportunity. But that doesn't give you nothing. It's no. it's personal pleasure. Yes. But if you're starting to grow, obviously you can be fine with your job, get right. your good paycheck, benefits, this and that. You have nothing yeah, to worry not about. Not everyone's wired the way we were wired. No. Though, right. We're just to the next thing yeah. all the time. Uh, but that that those things are definitely uh, even just having nice cars, mm-hmm. uh, especially exotic cars or supercars. Uh, that's my first one, and yeah, uh, it's a huge difference. I didn't think it'd be a it'd be a, a, a good uh, good investment, but it was right. And yeah, in certain cars, knocks and then, down doors. Oh, oh, it gets you into people. It gets you in these clubs. It gets also, you, in you these, learn. Like, well, it gets you to different rooms. You learn from other people. Yeah, like the people I'm talking to now about these cars, like. It's insane. I'm in, right? the, I'm in the middle group. I'm not the dumbest guy in the room. Yeah. Not the smartest You're guy right in the room. There, I'm no. right in the mood. Yeah. I have I provide value in the room. Yes. But I'm learning. Yeah. And these people around me, it's it's a lot of fun. They're dude. fun to drive. Yeah. They hold their value pretty good. Yeah. 
And uh, you meet a lot of people through them, and it's a huge networking tool, just like a watch, too. Not as big as the car, but it, it does open a conversation. Well, it's different levels because yeah. you could equally be <coughs> in a room of people, and the guys wearing watches, they may not have exotic cars. They may have a Land Rover or an Escalade, right? Yeah, yeah. And they have a nice watch. Yes. Different world. Or the guy who's got a fucking Lambo may not have a watch, right? Yes. So let's say a different, it's a crossbreed. Or you're a guy like my dad. Yeah. That. Zero, yes, nothing. What do you, what do you say about those guys? Because because me, I'm in the world like the billionaire who wears jeans and a flannel. Yeah, he's trying to hide from money. Yes, okay, he's got all the money he's ever gonna fucking yes. need. There's you a would, sweet spot yes, there. You are where, in the you world know. where hey, money attracts money. Yes, I want to get in these rooms. I'm yes. not being flashy, but I'm trying to make more. Yeah, just look, trying to look There's, nice and yeah. be presentable and. Yeah, uh, but yeah, and then you, the you have are, the people that are all out, full yeah. brand, everything. Well, they're, they're full of shit. Trying so hard, they're full of shit. Yes, there's a sweet spot where we live in. It's like, hey, we've got money, we're, we're successful, we we're like trying nicer to, things. We're trying to upscale and be in the next room, right? Yes, the guys who are flexing are just full, they're renting. And then, and then you got yeah. a guy like my dad that just don't give two shits <laughs> about Gucci and well, all he's got these all the brands. Money he needs. That's the difference, right? You know, when be, I get listen, when I get to a level. Where I have all the money my myself yeah. and my family will ever need, you may never hear from me again. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Until then, you're gonna hear a lot about me. My dad drives like a Mazda three. I'll never do that. <laughs> I'll never do and that. And he don't give two shits. <laughs> and he walks in rooms yeah. and he's worth a lot more money than probably ninety nine percent. Right. He could buy whatever store he's walking in. Jesus, yeah. But he jeans, just no name brand, everything yeah. in a Mazda three. And uh, yeah, it's uh Different, different, very time different, zone, right? yeah, very different mindset mentality. Mm. And you know, even coming up, he never done that, right? He, he never like wore anything fancy, so it's pretty right. cool. So a, a different, different mindset, different mentality, different goals too. I think. Different goals, right. yeah, yeah. We have goals that are very aligned. That's why yeah. we get along so. And great. certain people like the finest things. Some people. Yeah. I mean, like I to love, hold on to everything. To, when I go to eight hundred one Chop House, <laughs> yes, and the oh, valet my guy, second home, and the valet guy knows me. And I get the biggest fucking shrimp I've ever had in my whole life. Yes. I love that shit. I live yeah. for it. It doesn't cost so much money, but it's cool. When I go to Perry's every Friday. Yes. And the valet guys know me. And I go in the bar. It's a good feeling. And I walk in, and it's like the Cheers theme song. Everyone knows my name. The bar. Yes. It's fun. It, it, mean, it means fun. something. And then you network with the people. You make money. It's like we're all out there helping each other out. It's great. Yes. So listen. Shout out to 801 Chop House. 801 Chop House My second Denver. home. Love it. Perry's Steakhouse in Denver. <laughs> There's a lot more. A lot of fucking people have helped me get to where I'm at, and I, and I yeah. love it. And I, I love being able to help those people. Yes. Like you. You got you got me in so many rooms, and I provided value to you. That I love being able to carry my own weight, help you out, help each other out. It's so much yes, fun. that's what it's all um, about. Because if you're just the guy who's always taken, it's not, it doesn't, it's not fun. No. Dude. And eventually, those guys stop giving, too. Yeah. You can't provide value. It's like, all right, dude. Like, And again, that falls it. back on my Masonic values. Yep. And uh, you know, not just be about me. Recruiting evolution of you know, yeah. Stefan. Just trying no, to be but me. it goes back to that too, and making me a better person. Not be all about me and just me being successful. Just like you brought up the, you know, I, I was picked to to speak on on Benjamin's yeah. podcast. Yes, and it wasn't just about me. Right. You know, he was talking about how I was a lineman and what I am today and what. You know, and you have a similar background in those things, and he I was so I gladly highlighted. It was you cool because he shouted me out in a room full of sh- mostly strange. I knew Stefan and maybe five people in a room full of fifty people. Yeah, he shouts me out. It was awesome, and then Benjamin pulls me up and tells my story. It was cool. Like it worked out. It was, it was great, man. Yeah. So I appreciate you. But that's how not be selfish. Like I said, you're the universally love only universally love person that I know. <laughs> well, thank you. I mean that. Well, so, Unfortunately, I can't run for president. Because no, I wasn't, he wasn't born, born here. here. He's a fucking But fo- maybe governor. He's a fucking foreigner, you know? <laughs> governor, there you go. All right, I'll listen, be this, back. This, <laughs> this was great. I want to wrap this up. Any last words to the camera, to the crew, Man, to me? I, I just want to thank you. Yeah. This was great. Uh, I'm not used to all this stuff. It's cool, though, right? Uh, I, did, yeah. I, I do like it. Um, thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you for your friendship. You're welcome. And uh, Cheers, brother. Cheers to success. Cheers.